Thanksgiving, everyone. Actually, I should say happy pre-Thanksgiving. I've got about 13 people coming, and my question of the day for you is, if you're having a large crowd or even a small crowd, are you doing a sit-down dinner or do you do a buffet dinner? Uh, this year, I think last year I did kind of a buffet, which was the first time I'd ever done that. This year I'm going back to my usual sit-down dinner and I want to reveal to you what my Thanksgiving table looks like. Now the way that I just came in is actually the way you guys would come in if you were here for Thanksgiving dinner because all of my friends are good friends and they always use the family entrance. So this is my dining room table. And I always set the table pretty much well in advance by several days for a couple of different reasons, uh, primarily so that I can enjoy it for longer than just setting it that morning and then everybody eats and then everything gets cleaned up. This way I can enjoy the tableau and the beauty of it and the beauty of the things that I use to compose the table for a period of time. Because a lot of the things, if, if you're like me, a lot of the, the china and things like that most of the time are put away and you don't enjoy them as much as you do when they're actually out and pressed into use for, for the Thanksgiving feast or Christmas or, or whatever occasion. So here's my centerpiece that hopefully you guys saw me make. They are my decoupage pumpkins and we'll put a link to that video above if you still want to make something at the last minute for your own table. And the rest of it kind of just fell into place. Now I found a great source on Amazon for my tablecloth and I've got a smaller version on my kitchen table and this is a larger version. These are so expensive or so inexpensive, but they look so expensive. And we'll try to put a link to these also. And then the napkins, okay, I love this you guys. I really like my napkins to be oversized. So also on Amazon, I found some towels, some dish towels that perfectly match this tablecloth. And they're oversized and they will make perfect napkins. And they're also a little bit more inexpensive than if I had gotten custom, customized napkins to match the tablecloth. So I really like that and I'll try to put a link below too. And who knows if, if you can maybe even get them in time for Thanksgiving if you've got Amazon Prime. So another reason that I set the table in advance is I want to, I want to see how it all comes together so that I'm not pressured the day before or the morning of to put it all together because I am the Thanksgiving house. Now around, uh, around my table and with my friends, we do something that we do every year and that is we have always kind of done potluck. So everybody knows what their assignments, is, assignments are. This is kind of a Friendsgiving. My boys are not gonna be here this year, but I've got lots of very, very, very dear friends who come every Thanksgiving. And and as just tradition goes, they just bring the same things every year. They know what their assignments are and it works out just so easily. I even, down to, I even tell them to leave their mess at home. So just bring it to me in its most beautiful state and we will just reheat it if necessary and then put it on the sideboard and we'll be ready to eat. That way at the end of Thanksgiving dinner, I've got all of, I've got the cleanup from the table itself, but most of the pot and pan cleanups cleanup is uh, left at my guests' homes. So here's something else I like to do for my table. Mine is a beveled glass top table. And I, I really like it when there's some cushion to it, when I put down the plates and napkins and, and flatware. And so underneath it, I have just a thick piece of felt that you can get just about anywhere. It's not finished. It's not anything. It's just a rough piece of felt that you too can use underneath your table, whatever size it is. I use this indoors and out. I wash it afterwards. It's great. You don't really have to have one of those expensive table co covers. Another thing that I typically do, I don't like to iron. Now, sometimes my friend Jenny will <laughs> iron my linens for me 
before the big day. But usually what I do is I just lay the tablecloth out and then I just spritz it with water and kind of stretch it out. And then all of those wrinkles easily come out over time because that's another reason that I kind of do it in advance so those wrinkles can relax and I don't have to do a lot of ironing. I also did it on my little sideboard over here where I've just got a white tablecloth. Stuart, if you can show, this one is a, probably a better example. And this is, just plain, this is just plain water, so there's some wrinkles there and I just spritz them and then the wrinkles come out and it relaxes into place. So this is a drop leaf table that I keep in the corner. I'll go ahead and put out some of the accessories, some of the flatware that I need for serving um, and get kind of an idea of where things will go. Some of it remains in the kitchen, some of the food items and the rest of it will come out here on this table and then we can just serve ourselves accordingly. Now, another reason that I said it in advance is because a lot of this stuff has been in my cabinetry in my dining room and it may not necessarily be clean it may just be a little dusty so what I do is I go ahead and set my table and I know what it's going to look like I know what the composition of it's going to be and then over the next couple of days I'll run the stuff that's been in the cupboard through the dishwasher or I'll wash the crystal and then all I have to do is just put it right back in place so I've got the composition already designed and then I, I can ensure that I have really clean glassware and clean uh, flatware, plates, bowls, all of that kind of thing. Now to me, the more candlelight, the better. So typically on any table that, uh, tablescape that I'm creating, I always have lots of candlesticks. Now this year, I really wanted some very dramatic, really tall candlesticks and I ordered some, but they are back ordered and it's going to take a while for them to get here so I'll just have to I'll just have to be satisfied with my regular 10 and 12 inch candles and then over in the window I have some some of the other tableaus that I made for Christmas or excuse me for Thanksgiving some of the leaves that I sprayed with that spray enamel I've got some more candle candles lit over here. In Oklahoma on Thanksgiving, it's supposed to be a gray and cloudy and kind of rainy day, Stuart. So I think that all of the candlelight will be welcome. We normally, everybody at, at my table normally arrives around three o'clock in the afternoon and then we cook, we visit, uh, and then we just eat whenever it's ready. We try not to really pressure ourselves too much to sit down at the exact time. Now, if you, if you do set a table, I have another question for you. Do you use place cards? So I pretty much always use place cards and I think it's very sweet. So if um, I have I have one friend of mine and his he, he he is divorced and so sometimes some kids are coming, some kids aren't. But if, he, if one of his children is coming or he's coming and they've got a companion or whatever, he very uh, thoughtfully calls me in advance so I can make a place card for them too. So nobody feels no one feels left out. So you'll notice that I haven't even filled my little salt and pepper shakers yet, but I will do that. I will remember several things. Here's kind of a checklist of things if you're the Thanksgiving house. I set a reminder on my phone to make sure that I take out the butter from the refrigerator well in advance so it softens up and is perfect for those rolls. I make sure that somebody brings some just Wonder White bread and some uh, Kraft Miracle Whip and some iceberg lettuce because everybody always wants a turkey sandwich after. I always make sure someone will bring whipped cream for the pies 
everybody brings whatever kind of pies that they that they choose and that they like and typically we're overwhelmed with pies which is kind of fun and then normally what I do is I serve dessert in a completely different location so if we're all here sitting at the table then we can enjoy it and then we can get up and we can move to the living room I think this year Stuart we I, I might serve it out in the studio because I've got a fireplace out there and it would be really nice for us to go out there and I think have kind of a different venue for dessert and it's nice I think sometimes when you entertain to move from one location to another location if you guys are wondering if Stuart will be here for Thanksgiving yes Stuart will be here for Thanksgiving he's kind of got two families he's got my family and then he's got his daughter and his mom's family and they're gonna celebrate Thanksgiving on a different day so yes Stuart will be here and he'll try to capture some of of, uh, some candid shots of some of my guests and some of the things that we serve but I think it's really nice I I like the way it turned out you'll notice that I've already got on the plates I've got little wisps of greenery now if this is dried out I put it here this morning just to show you but if it's dried out by Thanksgiving I'll just clip some some new greenery to make sure that it is all fresh and then one last tip, and that's that typically everyone brings wine or whatever they like to drink. And we have the bar area set up in a completely different location. Because what I have found, anybody who is preparing Thanksgiving dinner or really even just staging a Thanksgiving dinner knows how frustrating it can be when everybody is in the kitchen. And so what I try to do is, is just really relocate all of the activity in different areas of the house so that crowds don't congregate all in one space. As much as I love my old houses, or love my old house and old houses in general, their spaces are a lot more cramped than open space living in newer homes. And so I try to really be mindful of that in terms of where my guests will hang out and visit and where they'll tend to congregate. So I'll, if it, the day is nice, I'll usually set that bar up outside, then people can come in and out. And again, if it's a nice day, then we'll have a fire, a fire lit outside as well. So it's really, really nice. It's also really helpful, I think, because my guests come every year and they kind of know the routine. They, they know where to place stuff when they come in. They know where to hang their coat. They know where to put their stuff. And and it's just really, really nice. And for some of them, I have, I have, for one friend of mine, I have a special champagne flute that she uses. And for another friend of mine, I do something a little special for her too. So it's always nice to make your friends feel like they're family because they really are. So there you go. I'm a little tease. I have, have completely rearranged my living room. And Stuart, you can do a brief glimpse of that if, if you want, just a little brief glimpse and I'll show you what all we did and how I changed it around and how I repurposed lots of stuff that I have in, had in different parts of my house and, and moved them down here. It was real fun and it, it's like looking at life through a new pair of glasses. So that's really fun. So that's a tease for what's coming up in, in addition to some holiday videos. Make sure to watch my holiday playlist because you can see what things looked like last year. And then also make sure if you missed the bulb planting one that we did a couple of days ago, if you wanna know how to plant bulbs in pots, that will give you some instructions on how to do that. So thank you for coming to my Thanksgiving table. I wish you a happy and a safe Thanksgiving and the days after. So enjoy your long weekend and enjoy your loved ones. Well, here's my fashion epilogue, such as it is for today. It's all about being comfortable as I've been working in the house. So my earrings, let's see, my earrings are just 
hoops, just standard inexpensive hoops that I got, I think, at Target years ago. My necklace is a cameo that I got when we took our boys to Rome many, many years ago. I got this, I think, uh, on a little at a little jewelry store on the Piazza Navana. Um, my apron is from World Market. I love this apron. I actually have it in two different colors. I've got it in kind of a gold color, and in this one, it's great because it's got great pockets. My joggers are are old. These are from Target. They are just comfortable to the extreme. As are my sandals. Leopard is a neutral, you guys told me. And these are Chinese laundry and I got them on Amazon years ago. I am obviously in need of a pedicure, which I hope to do tomorrow in preparation for Thanksgiving. So there you go. There's my fashion epilogue for today.